broad stripes and bright stars exactly 150 years ago as a flagship university of the state of Kansas. So we're celebrating our second centennial this year, and I think the president must have heard about it and decided that he wanted to come here and join us celebrate. Over the decades, we have educated leaders for our state, for our nation, for the world, from astronauts and Fortune 500 CEOs to actors, and teachers, engineers, and journalists. We contributed to the health and vitality of communities around the globe, whether through the service of a small town doctor or pharmacist, the creation of new jobs at a startup company, of understanding our history. All of this in service of our mission to lift students and society. Now, it has been more than a century since the last sitting president visited KU, though we have welcomed five former presidents, and not long ago, we were visited by KU graduate Juan Manuel Santos. United States will be here in just a few minutes. <laughs> Are you saying that? I was like, I mean, I wouldn't put it past that. Yes, yes. Give a big round of applause. 
It is good to be at KU. I, I got to admit, uh, I, I took a, uh, a moment to uh, meet with Coach Self and the KU basketball team. I mean, we're here for other business, but while I was here, I thought I should talk to some basketball players. Student politics here. Any, any school of politics named for Bob Dole is one I'd be proud of too, because he is a great Kansan and a great American. Uh, no, it's good to be back in Kansas. I've got deep roots in Kansas. Yeah! Yeah, as you know, my mom was born in Wichita. Her mom grew up in Augusta. The father was from El Dorado. So, so I'm, a, I'm a Kansas guy. Now that helped me uh, in the caucus here in 2008. It didn't help. This up is proof that any vision of a more hopeful politics must be naive and misguided. But as I pointed out, I still believe what I, I said back then. I still believe that we as Americans have more in common than not. And I have seen too much of the good, generous, big-hearted optimism of the American people over these past six years to believe otherwise. I will never stop trying to make our politics work better. That's what you deserve, and that's how we move this country forward. And Kansas, we've got some big things to do together. <laughs> that we can prepare our kids for this more competitive world, a 21st century economy. And today, our younger students have earned the highest math and reading scores on record. Our high school graduation rate has hit an all-time high, and more young people like you are finishing college than ever before. About 10 million uninsured Americans have finally gained the security of health coverage. Uh, at every step, we were told that we were misguided or too ambitious or the laws we passed would explode deficits or crush jobs or destroy the economy. I just want everybody to remember that. <laughs> Roll back the tape. Yeah. Roll back the tape. And instead, we've seen the fastest economic growth in over a decade. We've seen the deficits cut by two-thirds. People's 401ks are in better shape because the stock market has doubled. And today, I want to focus on one of those ideas, and that's child care. Uh, and, uh, my grandparents were from Kansas. Well, yeah. my grandfather, Stanley Dunn, uh, you know, he went to Europe to fight in World War II. And while he was gone, my grandmother, she was like Rosie the River, Madeline. She, she worked uh, on an assembly plant for, for bombers. And because it was a national priority, having women in the workforce was critical. Right? My, my grandmother worked at a bomber assembly line in Wichita. And by that time, my mom had already been born. So this country provided universal uh, childcare because they understood that if women are working, they're going to need some help. Right? They understood that. At the same time, they were paying back student loans. So this is what, this is something you have a deep interest in, all of it. Because I'm assuming some of you are going to have a little bit of school debt. No. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> and then you start a family and, and now you want to start saving for their college education, but in the meantime, you're already paying the equivalent of college tuition just to make sure that they're okay at home. <laughs> Although they all say, I know you. <laughs> I see you on TV. <laughs> That's what they always say. I see you on TV. I say, yeah. 
You're the president. <laughs> but you, but, so you have these wonderful teachers, and 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 the, the light in, in the, all of these children's eyes, you know, the, the sense of possibility and potential for these kids made me just that much more determined to keep strengthening and keep promoting uh, and expanding early childhood education to get all of our children a strong start. It's 2015! This should be sort of a no-brainer. Congress still needs to raise the minimum wage. who really believe that they can work full-time and support a family on less than $15,000 a year, they should try. Yeah. Uh, they should vote to give millions of hard-working people across America the raise that they deserve. going to college and not being loaded up with debt. I want to get to yes for folks like Steve Ozark from right here in Lawrence. Where's Steve? I know I saw him. He was right there. That's a, you're not Steve. So last year, Steve wrote me a letter about his vision for this country. Everybody has a place at the table. I want that country to be one that shows the world what I know is still to be true, that we are still not a collection of just red states and blue states. We are still the United States of America. So we've made it through some hard times, but we've laid a new foundation, Jayhawks. We've got a new future to write. The young people here are going to write a new future for America. Let's get started right now. Thank you. God bless you.